walk in these doors thinking it's all about us. It is true. I think one time or another, every single one of us has, has thought about that. About, I need something from God. I want, I want, I want. I need, I want something from God. And then leave these doors unchanged. And thinking that if he gets, if he gives me what I want, then I'm crazy. It's not about us. Tonight, if you haven't already yes, I'm talking about let's deny yourself. As you walk in these doors, as, as much as you can, actually. Deny yourself. Everybody can turn to Luke 9. Really quick while you're turning there. I just have to say, man, we serve a perfect God. Amen. We serve a grace of God. A merciful God that we do not deserve His forgiveness. His grace and mercy just overpowers us. And that's what His blood is for. And tonight when I speak about some things, I'm not specifically talking to a person. I'm not talking about any specific person. But I'm talking about specific things that is in our lives. So I pray that you don't get offended, and if you do, good, because it is a conviction of the Holy Spirit. Okay? I ask God, man, this has been in my spirit for so long. God, when am I going to preach this message? I mean, it's been a while. And then just recently, and some of you noticed, most all of you noticed, that I was in a valley. I was in this valley of heavy depression. And it weighed so far down on me that I couldn't even lift my hands to worship God. It was that hard to even sacrifice all, everything that was within me to sit there and say, you are holy no matter where I'm at. It was really hard. It was really hard. So when I talk about this, I'm talking to myself. I'm preaching to myself. Because I've been there. I was just there. And I'm just getting out. And I'm going to read out the NLT version. I like the NLT version. It kind of defines the words a little bit more. It says, then Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he said to the crowd, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways. Pick up your cross daily and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, yes. you will save it. And really quick, uh, Matthew 10, 38, he also says, anyone who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy. So, I'll get to, into that in a second. We're going to break down this verse, and I'm just going to dwell on this verse. In Luke. What is a follower? A disciple. And I, I, I heard somebody say this earlier, was uh, it means this, a disciple Identity is wrapped up in Jesus' identity. That's what a follower is. What is denied? To refuse, to recognize, or acknowledge, to disown, disavow, oppose, argue against something, to refuse, to accept, to reject is false, like false, I would say false, like fleshly, feel good. In the Bible days, when people saw something carried on the cross, they knew that death was coming. So when Christ says, pick up your cross and follow me, what does that mean? What does that mean? Just to carry something heavy because that's what he told us to? It means to die to your flesh. Die to everything that is in between you and God. If there is something in your life right now that is holding you back from getting closer to God, I ask you to deny that tonight. We must be willing, number one, to die to yourself. Yes. The phrase deny himself literally means to completely disown. That means if you have something in your life, you disown it. You don't pick it back up. You don't take it back in. 
It's like taking out the trash. Let it go. You don't take your dirty trash back in. You let your trash go and somebody, the garbage man comes and picks it up. To utterly separate, separate oneself from someone or something. I know it sounds hard. Self does not like to be denied. Our flesh hates it. But until it is, we cannot possibly follow after Jesus. We learn that he desires for us to. In Galatians, in the NLT, it says those who belong to Christ have nailed the passions and desires for their sinful natures through his cross and crucified them there. We live in a day of casual Christianity. I heard someone say that the average church could drop off a quarter of its members from the membership role, and neither the church or the drop members would notice any difference. A quarter. That's because people are not serious. We live in a people-pleasing church. It's all about me. We live in that society, and these sometimes these big churches, they want to people please. They want to have the best portion, the best youth group, the best. Really, why do, why do they get grounded off of? Are they really looking at who Christ is in their lives? Or are they just doing church and going home? I cannot stand, this is a pet peeve, but I cannot stand where people walk around and go, well, you know, all there's wrong this must be my cross. There's a difference between suffering, like dying to self. Yeah, we may suffer with our crosses, but also means you take up your cross and you die to it. That means you won't pick it back up. That means you won't suffer from it anymore. That means it won't be a temptation. Christ said what his burden is light, and the weight of this world should be on cross, on Christ's cross see my example over here. To understand what this cross Jesus refers to is, we need to talk about what it isn't. The cross isn't your lost husband or your lost wife. It isn't your wayward children. It isn't your dealing neighbor. Your cross isn't your difficulties, your health, or bad situations you face in life. You say, well, that's my cross, but it's not. That is not what Jesus meant. The cross is not just a place for suffering. And uh, I wrote down, there was a, the verse where Peter, when he cut off the soldier's ear, and uh, I, really, I really looked at that accordingly to this, what I'm talking about. Because Christ told Peter to, die by the, uh, to live by the sword is to die by the sword. Those who live by the sword to die by the sword. That's what Jesus said to Peter, but what Jesus showed to Peter was to die by the cross for live. The sword breaks something else. The cross breaks. The sword wounds other people. The cross heals. Okay. When we come into the church, we are here for ourselves mainly, right? Or are we here to worship the Lord? Come to God and worship Christ. I really love this church because I just love the worship. Everybody's just really in tune. We're all excited. We are actually together, not in a time, as a we, and worshiping in unity. And I love that. And just, it really blesses me to see that. Sometimes we come in with a selfish desire, sometimes I can get one. We expect God to give us what we want. We don't want. When we don't give Him what He wants. I'm going to go ahead and have them put on quietly a song. I have kind of a small, tiny skit I'd like to do. When I put this cross together, I was wondering how I was going to carry a microphone and hold this cross. I tried to get as much as I can think of. I didn't want to overwhelm it. But you might see something that you're struggling with today. I know that I'm struggling sometimes with certain things that I need to deny myself from. So, I will pick up my cross. It's heavy. <laughs> oh, I don't pick up the... See? 
then this is great. It's great because sometimes the cross can be heavy and dragging. And sometimes I can't do this no more. It's just. My, my lusts of the flesh. It's just easier. It's just easier to not carry my cross. It's easier to pick up my sin and just, I'm going to take this. I'm going to take this. I'm going to do nothing. Christ said, crucify myself. Okay, I'm going to try again. It's really heavy. But I'm going to try again. That's just one. I mean, there's a lot. 
But we all think that we are not sinning at times. We are not taking up our convictions. Well, God knows my heart. He does. He knows my heart. He knows I love him. So I'm just going to finish my drink of alcohol and we'll call it a night. He knows I love him. He knows my heart. Do you know that sometimes the heart can be deceitfully wicked and unwise? Whatever's holding you back, it could be anything. It could be anger, it could be pride, it could be lust, it could be anything. Think of something right now. And I mean, how I fuck pencils. I don't want to do that. You're going to have to have an imaginary piece of paper and a pencil. Okay? You're going to write down what is holding you back. Think of what is holding you back. At least one thing, if not two. And I challenge you guys tonight. Bring it up here to the altar. Deny yourself and never pick it up again. God didn't call us to go back to where we came. He kept he wants us to press forward to the mark to win that prize. Right. Amen. I got a song. Go ahead. Let's all stand real quick. How much worldly pressure is on us that if I'm angry, I'm just going to stress out, I'm just going to go smoke that cigarette real quick. I don't want to pick up my cross yet. So this person stressed me out. I'm going to go curse them out because I've got to tell them that. Tonight, I'm hoping that you guys have a great I'm praying that there's something in your life that is preventing you to move forward, to get closer to God. And if that's you tonight, I call you up at this altar. Take what you got and nail it to your cross at this altar. I'm here at the altar too. Lord, I pray. That you just 